fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that the happy people have to pay. Oh, we need to send the do-do-do and okay. Okay. Oh, man, get it! This is the Lone Ranger telling you that's a mighty popular call out here in the West. At roundup time, you'll hear it on many a ranch at the first streaks of dawn. And you should see those long-legged cowboys roll out of the blankets and head for the chuck wagon. They've got a full back-breaking day in the saddle ahead of them, and they know what they need. A good, substantial breakfast. One that will stick to their ribs and really keep them feeling and doing okay. Take a tip from the folks out west. Keep on eating your weenies, and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll sell With time to kill while waiting for the Potter City blacksmith to shoe his horse, Tonto, the Indian friend of the Lone Ranger, sat down on a bench in front of the stagecoach station. He had been there but a short time when the stage arrived. Pete, you're right on time. Howdy, Mr. Morgan. Where's the strong box? Right here at my feet. I'll hand it down to you. You got a hold of it? Yes. The strong box was heavy, and the driver helped the station master carry it into the office. Close the door, Pete. Right. Where's my key? Oh, here it is. This box holds over $20,000 in paper money and gold. Oh, gone. That's a lot of money. Uh, watch outside while I dial the combination on the safe. Yeah, I'm watching. Uh, do you see anyone who looks suspicious? Nope. The stable boys are changing the horses. An Indian's helping my passenger unload his luggage. No one else around. Yeah. To the right. Twice. Twenty-seven. The passenger's name is Prindle. He's Widow Frisbee's brother. When she died last month, he got her property. Told me he plans to stay here in Powder City and go into some kind of business. Oh, thunderation. What's wrong, boss? Oh, I made a mistake. Now I've got to start dialing the combination all over again. Keep quiet while I'm doing it. Morgan concentrated on the safe, and Pete was equally absorbed in watching the street. Neither was aware of a man who moved with cat-like silence from the storeroom behind the office. The man's face was covered by a large bandana. He held a saddlebag in one hand and a heavy gun in the other. Crossing the office, he stood close to Pete's back, then used his gun as a club. Oh, Morgan oh. turned quickly at the sound of the blow. Hey, what's it? Keep quiet, you're covered. Well, what's this? Just what it looks like, a holder. Here's a saddlebag. I should hold all the paper money that's in the strong box. How did you learn about Keep this? quiet and fill the saddlebag. If you stall until your driver regains consciousness, I'll have to slug him again. Another rap on the head might kill him. Those in the street didn't suspect that a robbery was taking place. The stable hands were busy with the horses. 
while Toto carried the last of Mr. Prindle's luggage from the stagecoach to the station platform. I'm mighty obliged to you, Indian. Oh, me. Glad to help. Uh, one more favor. Would you watch my bags while I go inside and ask the station master about hotel facilities? Ah, uh, me watch it. Uh, thank you. Uh, before I go inside, I'll make sure we have everything out of the stage. Uh, I'd hate to lose anything. Inside the office, the outlaw held his gun unwaveringly as Morgan stuffed the paper money into the saddlebag. Never mind the gold. I'll sacrifice that. It's too heavy to carry. You will never get away with this. That's my worry. Pass him my saddlebag. Is the station master here ever... But... Robbery! Thief! Morgan charged in the split second when the outlaw's attention was diverted by Prindle's entrance. He seized the thief's gun hand and clutched at the bandana. The outlaw freed his hand and fired. Morgan, driven back by the impact of the bullet, maintained a death grip on the bandana, tearing it off the robber's face. Picking up the filled saddlebag, the thief ran into the back room and slammed the door. An instant later, Tonto hurried through the front door to Prindle, who stood speechless, staring and frozen by fear. The Indian grasped the situation, and as he moved to stop the flow of blood from Morgan's wound, the stable hands, followed by Jake Frame, the acting sheriff, rushed into the office. Hey, what's going on here? What was that gunshot? Uh, sheriff, I, I was... Uh, oh, speak uh, up. Did you shoot Pete and Morgan? No, 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 no. I didn't do it. Pete's not shot. He's regaining I saw a thief. Quiet, quiet. 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 You're all talking at once. Sheriff, Pete is conscious. Uh, how are you, Pete? Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm all right. Except for a headache, I guess I was hit from behind. I... Yeah. Hey, what's happened to the boss? He was shot. Him live, wounded man. Him need doctor. I'll go get Doc Brady. Well, that's a good idea. You, Mister, what's your name? Uh, Prindle, uh, Joe Prindle. I, I was a passenger on the stagecoach. You said something about a thief. Yes, I, I saw him. He had a bandana on his face. He shot the station master, then picked up a saddlebag and ran that way. Into the back room, huh? He must have gone out the back door. Lem, you go and see if there's any sign of him. I look, but he's probably gotten away by this time. Brindle, tell me what you know about this. I, uh, I came into the office and saw the stage driver lying on the floor and a man holding a gun on the station master. He fired as the station master reached for the bandana that covered his face. Uh, Morgan's still holding the bandana. He must have torn it off. He did. Did you see the thief's face? Oh, yes. Did Morgan? Oh, I don't know, but I doubted he was shot so fast. But I'd know that thief. If I saw him again, I'd know him anywhere. Well, that being the case, you're an important witness, Mr. Prindle. Oh, Hey, I hope that crook doesn't kill you. It was late afternoon when Tonto left town and rode to a nearby woods to join the Lone Ranger in camp. He told about the shooting and robbery and finished by saying, So crook steal $10,000 in paper money. That's a lot of money. Is the deputy sheriff planning to guard the witness? Ah. Him go with Brindle to hotel. Get room there. Have man stand guard. Oh, good. What did the doctor say about the station master? Station master wounded bad, but him get well. Him conscious when me leave town. Did he see the face of the thief? No. No, Brindle only one who see face. Tonto, you said the thief escaped to the back door of the station. Not right. Him have horse waiting there. I was going to ask about that. Oh, uh, were there any tracks? Ah, uh-huh. Deputy Sheriff look and him find fresh hoof marks made by horse a thief. Posse follow tracks. Me go with them. Tracks clear for only short way, then lost on hard ground. Posse turn back. Maybe them give up too soon. Do you think we could follow the crook's trail farther than the posse? Ah, uh-huh. me think so. Well, it's too late to try it today. But we'll start tomorrow at sunrise and see what we can do. The following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the place where the posse had given up the search for the outlaw's trail. Beyond that point, they spent several hours riding back and forth on soft ground in search of recently made hoof marks that might be those of the thief's horse. They were near the edge of a woods that bordered the stage trail 
when they heard a team approaching and drew rein. Oh, 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 Stagecoach, fellow. Ah, did not leave town yesterday, but driver hit and head, so trip put off till today. Is the driver of that stage the man who was knocked out? Uh, him, same one. Get up, here. Get up. Passenger in there. Oh, Sabi, him, Prindle. Prindle? You mean the witness? That's right. Him leave town, there's no witness left. I wonder why he's leaving. Mm, he not know. Him say, him stay. Let's stop that stage. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowlful, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfasts every day with delicious Cheerios and milk, and get that good go power. Then folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. Come on, the Lone Ranger riding well ahead of Toto quickly overtook the stage. Then rode alongside and shouted to the driver. Right in, stop the team. Don't shoot, hold your fire, I'll stop. Oh, ho there, oh, ho there. Oh, easy. Oh, oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Don't shoot, mister. I'm not going to shoot. I just want to talk to your passenger. Uh, uh, to me? Yes, Mr. Prindle. Oh, Scott, oh, fellow. Who? Oh, that Indian. I saw him in town yesterday. I think you're both acquainted with Tonto. How, oh, Mr. Prindle? But, uh, uh, hello, Tonto. Tonto. Are you in cahoots with this masked owl hoot? Oh, him, good friend. Him, Lone Ranger. He, who? What's that? Did you say he's the Lone Ranger? That's right. Well, oh, God. You stop worrying, Prindle. This man's on our side of the law. Oh, I, I hope so. Mr. Prindle, Tonto told me about the robbery and shooting you witnessed. He gave me the impression that you intended to remain in Powder City. All right. I did intend to, but I, I've changed my mind. I don't want to be murdered. By whom? The thief who shot and nearly killed the station master. Last night, a shot was fired through the window of my hotel room. It just missed me. Then the thief must have been in town last night. He may still be there. I don't care where he is. I'm getting away, far away. Did you tell Deputy Frayne you were leaving Powder City? Yes. He said he didn't blame me. Mr. Prindle, a few years ago, the West was nothing but a wilderness, peopled only by Indians and wild animals. Those were the enemies to be faced by the pioneers from the East. What about it? Every settlement was founded by men and women with the courage to face the enemies and the strength to conquer them. If those people had turned back when they first met hardship or danger, our country couldn't have expanded. What's that got to do with me? You're giving up. You're retreating from danger. Oh, uh, do you expect me to go to Powder City and wait for that killer to get me? I expect you to go back, help bring an outlaw to justice, and establish your home. Doggone, Prindle. He talks good sense. Oh, but I, uh, that is, if, if, uh, well, if the law could give me some assurance that I'd be protected, why... I'll give you this much assurance... No one will kill you without first killing Tonto and me. Prindle, that settles it. What do you mean, that settles it? That kind of assurance from the Lone Ranger is enough for any man. And it's got to be enough for you. I'm taking you back to Potter City. Get around there now. Get around there. Easy. Easy. Get up. Get up. Come to it. Oops. Oh.
Later the same morning, Deputy Jake Frayne finished his desk work in the sheriff's office, then went to the house where he lived alone. He closed the door, then crossed the living room and opened the bedroom door. The coast is clear, Carslake. Come on out. Prindle would have recognized the man who walked out of the bedroom as the thief who had shot the station master. He had been hiding in the deputy's home since the previous evening, when after riding on hard ground to baffle pursuers, he had sneaked back into town. Has Prindle left town? Yes. Then I'm in the clear. <laughs> the shot I fired through the hotel window did the trick. Prindle was mighty eager to leave on the stage. It's a good thing you had me working with you, Carslake. Ah, uh, it's the easiest money ever earned. Hey, who's that? Oh, take it easy, Carslake. You're in the clear. If someone sees me here in your house, they... What they'll... do they do? Everyone knows you and I are friends. I'll see who's at the door. Well, hi, Frank. Pete. Howdy, Carslake. Howdy. Well, what are you doing here? thought you were on the road with the stagecoach. Uh, I was, but I turned back. Why? A man we met on the trail persuaded Prindle to come back and stay in town. So he'll be on hand to testify against the thief. When and if he's caught. Who's the meat on the trail? <laughs> Cars Lake, neither you nor Frayne would believe me if I told you. The sheriff? Did you meet him? Nope. I'm not telling you just now. I, uh, I stopped at your office, Frayne. Uh, one of the men said you'd come home. I left Prindle there. He's waiting to see you. Well, uh, I'll go and see him. You're right. I'll take his luggage back to the hotel. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Now, of all the talk... Take it easy, Carsley. Listen, when you talked me into this job, you said it'd be easy. You said you'd have no trouble covering everything while you were in charge of the sheriff's office. Don't worry. Ah, uh, you couldn't even get rid of the witness. I got him out of town. He didn't stay. You wish he had. Now, what are you going to do? I'll get rid of Prindle permanently. You mean... You know what I mean. Come with me. Where? To my office. Have you lost your mind? I've been hiding since yesterday just so Sprinter wouldn't see me. Now you want me to go right to the sheriff's office where he's waiting. You won't have to go inside. Just wait outside the door in case I need you. Come on. Tonto met Pete at the hotel to help unload Prindle's luggage while the Lone Ranger waited with a witness in the sheriff's office. Carslake and Deputy Frayne approaching the sheriff's office saw a big white stallion tied to the hitch rail. That horse must belong to someone in the office. It's a fine-looking animal. Sure is. You suppose the owner is the man Pete met on the trail? He might be. Well, if he's in the office with Prindle, things are likely to be complicated. Leave it to me, Carslake. I'll go ahead just as we planned and size up the situation. Wait here. Right. Leave the door open. Hello, Deputy Frayne. Uh, hello, Prindle. Uh, Mast. Hello, Frayne. Who, who are you? Didn't Pete the driver tell you? No. Put your hands up. Who oh, threw your gun, Deputy? Deputy Frayne, this man is the Lone Ranger. The Lone? I don't believe it. It's true. Pete will tell you. Pete's easily fooled, Prindle, and so are you. I am convinced this is the man who shot Morgan and stole the money. Get your hands up, mister. I'm not fooling. Crane, I have credentials in my pocket. Keep those hands high. Come in here, Carslake. I know this man is not the thief. Set up, Prindle. Masked man, huh? Yes, yes, Carslake. Close the door and draw your gun. Cover, Prindle. You! What about me? You're the one. You stole that money and shot Morgan. Iced your hands, Prindle. Crane, that man, he's the thief. Crane knows it. Who's the masked man, Crane? According to Prindle, he's the Lone Ranger. But as far as I'm concerned, he's the owl who to rob the stage line. <laughs> That's smart figuring. It would sound convincing when we say that he came here and shot Prendel, who could identify him, then got shot by me. That's a good story. Take one of his guns, Carslake, and use it on Prendel. Uh, don't, don't, don't kill me. As Carslake holstered his gun and stepped forward, reaching for one of the masked men's, the Lone Ranger made his lightning bid for life. His lifted arms came down. No. The edge of his right hand no. chopped at the side of Carslake's neck. Come here, you. With his left hand, the Lone Ranger grabbed the outlaw's shirt and pulled Carslake close. Carslake! Shoot and you kill your partner. Carslake, half stunned, served as a momentary shield. The next instant, he was rocketed by a hard shove. Why, you? Stumbling backwards, he crashed into Jake Crane, and both men fell to the floor. I'll kill you! You're too slow. Oh, the masked arm. man fired from the hip. His bullet smashed Frayne's arm. I'll get him. No. Carslake's gun was bullet Are smashed you? before it cleared the holster. If you want more gunplay, say so. No, no, don't shoot again. Hold your fire. 
The door flew open to admit Pete the driver, Tonto, and the coroner. Kimosabe. There's a man who stole the cash and shot Morgan. And the deputy sheriff was in cahoots with him. Train. All right, pick up their guns, Tonto. Uh, let me get them. Car's like the crook. He stole the cash and shot Morgan. Train, you pole cat. Don't try to put all the blame on me. With your idea... You figured you could get away with the cash while the sheriff was out of town. Get up, Carsley. Where's the money? Half of it's in Frayne's house. That's his share. Where's the other half? I got it in my pocket. Otto, you better find some rope and tie those men. You don't don't need rope. I know where the sheriff keeps his handcuffs. Take charge of these two until the sheriff returns. Who are you? The coroner. Good enough. You have the authority to take charge until the sheriff returns. I'll help you, coroner. Mr. Coroner, I... I'd like to help, too, if I may. Yes, indeed, Prindle. Otto, we're no longer needed. Not right. Oh, can't you stay around? No, please. Otto and I have a long way to travel. Well, thank you for for sending me back. Prindle, you see now why the West needs honest men with the courage to fight crooks like Cars Lake. And even worse, crooks like Crane, who use a public office to aid criminals. Adios. So long. Goodbye. Prindle, as the masked man says, You've seen why the West needs honest men. You've likewise seen the West's most honest man in action. I mean the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Monday.